In this video, we will discuss how to connect into a pipe. So let's say we have this inlet right here, and we have a pipe going to an outfall, but you need to connect into that pipe. I'll show you a couple of different options on how to do that. One option is to come up here and use the place lateral. And the place lateral works. The only drawback with the place lateral is it will not give you the option to do a profile run at the end to see how the water is going through that pipe. But it will contribute on how the outfall comes out for the total water coming maybe into this one or the lateral inlet that's coming and in, tying into it. So I'll show you that option first. So go up to the place lateral. And in here, what you need to do is go down to your feature definition, set your feature definition to whichever pipe that you want. For this example, I'm going to use a circular concrete 12 inch. Next thing we have to do is identify the tap. And on this one here, you just go down through your options and go to stormwater node and set that to tap because you're tapping in to this existing line that's out there. And then whichever feature definition you want for your node. So on the, like I said, for this example here, I'm just going to go ahead and use this option that says 2x2 two two in SAG. I'm not going to worry about my reference element. I'm going to go ahead and lock my elevation for this one here at 95, just for this example here. But what I'm going to do is actually select this pipe right here, because I'm tapping into it. And then now you define where you need to put your node at. And you can come in here and change some of your other parameters for like the elevation of the node, what angle you want that inlet to be at, and also the skew to the trunk. So right now it's set to 90 degrees. If it's at some other angle, you can change it as needed. But for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and place it. I'm not going to worry about the rotation of it. Let me tab down and hit zero for that. And I'm going to skew it to 90 degrees. And now you'll see that we are tapped in to that pipe right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit F4 to clear it out. You will notice on this one here, it actually tied to the other end. So I can come in here and adjust that as needed, depending on where I want it connected to on that particular inlet. And you'll see that it's connected to that pipe. Now just to go ahead and do some drainage portions of the inlet. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And I got to change a couple things inside of here. I'm just going to go ahead and put in a flow coming into this inlet at 3.0. I calculated my CFS and that's how much water is coming into it. There's multiple ways you can do that. And then the other option I need to look at is my gutter. What type of gutter is coming into that inlet there? And I'm just going to go ahead and change it to curb and gutter type B. So now if I go ahead and go up to my analysis, go to my compute center, define whichever scenario that I'm wanting. I'll just use this example right here. Now I'll go ahead and compute it. And you'll see that it calculated not only this one right here, but it calculated this one right here because we basically have two separate networks that are being functioned right now. So I'm going to go ahead and close it out. Everything worked good for that. And what you'll notice here is if I select it, and let's say I want to do a profile run on that to show the hydraulics going through that pipe. I can come up to my layout option and go to this option right here that says utility run from links so I can select the links that I want to define for my profile run. But if I select it, you'll notice if I try to select it, it says laterals are not valid for profile runs. So I won't be able to analyze that water that's going through there. So something to kind of keep in mind if you do want to use the lateral if you're tapping into a pipe that's out there. So that's kind of one drawback for that. Let me go ahead and hit F4 to clear that out. Now the other option is I can come in here and tap into this, but on this one here, I'm going to use a transition to do it. And what this will do is it'll allow me to use the profile run to show how that water is going through there. 
and just double check on this one here, if I go to the properties of it, it also says that there's no flow coming through there. So it does calculate the water at the outfall for this additional water that's going through there, but it actually doesn't show the flow going through there. So like I said, there's a couple drawbacks with the place lateral. But at the end result, it does calculate it properly. But going back, let me go ahead and do this other option for transition. And this will allow me to put a transition at a certain point, place my node out there, connect it to, and then I got to make a couple changes to it to make it work properly for the setup that we got. So to show that, I'm going to go ahead and do place node. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this option right here for the 2x2 two two in SAG, same elevation. And I'm going to go ahead and right click for my reference. I'm going to set my elevation for my inlet at 95. And I'll just go through the prompts and place that inlet. Go ahead and hit F4. Now what I want to do is go back up here and use this option that says insert node. And I'm going to change my feature definition to this transition node right here. And it's underneath the stormwater nodes. And now it's going to say select conduit invert reference. So I'm going to go ahead and select the pipe that I'm wanting to tap into. Next option you get is do you want to split it? You can do yes or no. On this one here you do need to split the conduit even though theoretically that conduit going from here to there may not be split, in order for the hydraulics to work properly with ORD drainage, it does have to be split. If you don't split it, you won't be able to see the hydraulics going from here to where it's tapping into it. So for this here, you do need to split it. So I'll go ahead and change that to yes, accept that. Now define where I want to tap in to that line. And I'll left click to drop it off. I ain't gonna worry about the rotation. I'll just left click through those. And now I have that transition node out there. Now what I can do is come in here and basically put the conduit from this inlet to where I'm transitioning into this pipe. And I'll just use the circular concrete 12 inch for that. From there there and now you'll notice if I hit F4 that it tapped into that particular line now one thing that it did do though if you're noticing let me go ahead and rotate it you see it kind of broke it we need to make a couple changes to this in order to make it correct again so I'm going to go ahead and hit F4 I'm going to go ahead and select this transition node Let's go ahead and go to the properties of it. You see the ground elevation and you see the invert elevation. What we need to do is come in here and put this ground elevation at the invert elevation in order for it to run properly. So the first thing that I'm going to do is come up here and actually change that from 91. I'm going to change that to 92 and I'll explain why here in a second. I'll just tab to lock that in. For my invert elevation, I'm going to go ahead and go a foot below that. I'll tab to lock that in. And now you'll notice over here that it put it in the right spot. So whenever you're doing that, like I said, if you go to the properties of it, what you need to do is after you initially put it, Whatever that ground elevation is, you need to put that into the invert elevation because it's looking at that bottom of that pipe. And then for your ground elevation, you would want to go ahead and put it to whatever distance that pipe is. So if it's a 12 inch pipe, of course, my ground elevation is going to be one foot above that. Or if it's a 15 inch pipe, I would change that accordingly. So that's what you need to do there. So once I have that, I'll go ahead and hit F4. Now what I can do is I can come in here and I got to make a couple changes to this node here because I don't have any water coming through it yet.
on this one here for the additional carryover. Of course, this is where the water is coming into the actual inlet. We'll just say it's 3 CFS. And of course, I will go down to my gutter catalog and set that to whatever carbon gutter that I have for my particular project or whatever is going on at that particular inlet. So now once I have that, now I can go ahead and try to compute this. All the computations work like they should. So now if I come in here and I look at it, and I want to do a profile run to see how the hydraulics are performing, one thing that I can do is I can select it. Now if I go to the properties of it, you see that we have flow going through that pipe, which is a good sign. Okay. So now what I can do is let's go to my profile runs, which is underneath the Explorer profile runs. This is one way you can do it by right clicking and doing these options here. Or another way you can do it is go to the layout tab and then come up here and do it this way. Let's say I want to do a profile run from this link down to this link to the outfall. So I will go ahead and do the utility run from links because I can select the links that I want to use. And I'll just name this one profile run number one. You can name them however you desire. Now if I select this and this one, and I'll right click to reset it you'll see that it created that profile run by those dotted lines. And then maybe another one, I want to go from here down to this one. It's just a different profile run that you're doing. Select that conduit, select that conduit, right click to reset it, and it creates that profile run. Or if you just want a profile run from this conduit right here that's tapping into this, this trunk, you can do it that way. I'll just name this one here number three. Select that. If I'm done with it, that's the only thing that I'm worried about, I'll just right click to reset it. And it create that profile run. And to show that, if I go back over to my Explorer and go ahead and pin that, if I go to my Explorer, go down to Drainage and Utility Model, and then go down through here and go to my profile runs, you're going to see those three profile runs that I created. Now if I right click over it, I can do the open analysis profile and you'll see the water going through there. Now you'll see on this one here, it doesn't look quite correct. So I may have to adjust maybe my, my depth and so forth down through there. I may have to adjust that or let's go ahead and compute it again and make sure it's computing properly. And then go back into my open analysis profile. Yeah, I may have to adjust something right here, but you see that it's going through that as, as it needs. So, and that's profile run number one. So at this pipe right here, you know, I probably need to adjust that a little bit. If I go to profile run number two, you'll see it's working like it should. Or if I go to profile run number three and open it up, of course you see that's flooded because I have my pipe going in the wrong direction. Actually, I don't have it going in the wrong direction. I just need to get it to where this here is a little bit lower or this here is a little bit higher. So I'd have to make some adjustments to that to get it to work properly. But that will allow you to look at the profile runs for that and look at the water that's going through that pipe if you use that transition option versus the place lateral option like what you have right here. So those are a couple different options that you can look at whenever you're trying to tap into a pipe that's out there. Those are the options that, that you can do.